The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. When they, when they turn those front of house lights on, it really lets you know how dirty your glasses are. <laughs> Hello, Denver, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. <laughs> didn't, didn't get your fill earlier, I see. Mm, I'm well, I'm glad to see you're back for a second. <laughs> I'm your middle east brother, Travis McElroy. It's going to be a Travis show. <laughs> I'm your sweet baby brother in 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. <laughs> Holy shit. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Denver. Denver. There, could we do that like, could we do that in a different order sometime where it doesn't feel like a fuck you? Yeah. Denver, listen. The last thing Justin said to Travis and I backstage, this is not a joke, and it's probably unprecedented, I think, in our career of live performance. He said, y'all got to just, like, watch your chill level out there because they are incredibly (laughs) hyphy. I think he was suggesting we don't match your level or else we'll just start fucking crowd surfing and you guys won't get a very good podcast. We won't. We won't. It won't. We won't. We shan't. Okay. We used to like horses a lot. And we thought coming to a beautiful horse town like Denver, a town, I would say, competing with Louisville for how much they define themselves by horses. Even Lexington, Lexington too, I think, loves horses. They all love horses. What are some other cities? Think to yourself other cities that love horses, because that's what this podcast has been for a little bit now. Yeah, and we thought... They have such a powerful horse in Denver. They celebrate them. They think they went to play football and they said, which let's call ourselves horses. <laughs> and they said, no, 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 no. We shall be the Magnum horse. <laughs> the most powerful horses on earth, the Bronco. And uh, Bronco- Bunch of sports fans in the audience tonight. There always are at our shows and <laughs> That was until we landed at your airport? Okay, some airport fans tonight. Hey, folks, what's with the horse? Okay. I have, I have two children, and I could not explain to them <laughs> some, some things about the horse. It's huge. It's huge. fucking huge. It's Unfathomably huge. Blue? Uh, and it has glowing evil red demon eyes. eyes. The demon. It's somebody who who in your goddamn city looked at that and said, that perfectly encapsulates what we want visitors to feel yeah, about right. your, your greeting, Your greeting to this beautiful mountainous city is, um, yeah, come on in, motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm told it's nicknamed Blucifer. Okay. Can I, st- hold it, stop, stop. Stop. Stop, wait. Shh, 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 shh. Why are you cheering for this horse? It's so fucking scary. Uh, it looks like, you know how, it looks like a scarecrow for evil alien crows that like, like it's designed to scare off aliens or something. Like, it's, yeah, like it's if terrifying. a monster came here, the monster right. would be like, oh no, they've already no got a monster. If God, Sorry. If Godzilla came, he's like, I'm not doing battle with that. No way. No thanks. Hard pass. Um, we do advice on this show. Justin, I don't know if he said it or not, but sometimes we do other stuff too. Like for instance, Yahoo. Do you guys want a Yahoo? Oh, I love that. Yes. Um, could I get a bit more monitor? The horniness is interfering it's with really my wild. ability um, to hear. Here, here, 
Y'all gotta calm down. Here is one uh, sent in by Adrian Cowles. Thank you, Adrian. It's Yahoo Answers user Billy who asks. Billy? What a get. Billy asks, does NASA drug test? I'm thinking of being an astronaut. First of all, is astronaut just something you do on a whim? It's not like getting a job at like a gas station. I think I'll apply at NASA. Just roll the dice. Here's what I know about how to get a job at astronaut. <laughs> Aliens invade and they need all hands on deck. That's yes. number one. Number one. Maybe you have your own plane. Maybe you have your own plane, sure. That, they technically were freelancers in Independence Day, I'm pretty sure, but I'll meet you halfway. Three, you work at an oil rig and... What, what the fuck was up with that movie? They didn't have to, it went, okay. Yes, 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 the, yes, 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 The yes, premise yes, yes. of that movie, it was easier to train drillers to be astronauts Why? than train astronauts to be drillers. You're really indignant about this. I am. Okay. Uh, so, I think I would like to meet the person who's like, I should stop doing drugs. I have been kicking around the idea of becoming an astronaut. <laughs> I think that the ship of time has already sailed for you. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no film where, like, Randy Quaid decides in his, like, mid-60s. He's like, you know what? I've still got a great pitch. I'm going to uh, be an astronaut. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to pursue my lifelong dream of finally becoming an astronaut. Well, just to, just to correct you, the scenario would actually be... I want to be an astronaut, but I'm not willing to give up smoking weed. <laughs> right. I very much want to do That's actually very true, right? Because they could just quit and, and circumvent the problem. Right. But, okay, also, NASA wouldn't have a leg to stand on for drug testing because they would not be where they are without drugged out people going, I want to go up there. <laughs> like, a, yeah. That's where that started. Somebody looked at the moon and go, I want to eat that. I feel like there's certain jobs... If you get elected president of the United States, okay. I don't think they can drug test you because who would do it? I right. got drug tested at Best Buy. Right. That's a, the point is they different. wouldn't be like, bad news, everybody. I know how you voted, but he failed a drug test, and so now we got <laughs> so another one. Got, I feel like astronauts, there's like, what, like 100 people living who've gone into space? I just made that up. Um, I don't think they're going to... I don't think they're going to do it. I think you're totally fine. I, I think you're going to totally fine. To be fair, fine. they put them through pretty rigorous testing. If you passed every test except a drug test, they'd be like, still better than most. So yeah, get up there. Get up there. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. They you obviously know how to handle your shit. Yeah. They sure don't test you while you're up there. <laughs> That's a good point, Griffin. There is an argument to be made for ground control being like, well, I mean... You're the one going in the rocket, so... You gotta steer it, so fuck I guess it. if you want to get high, I guess. I mean, it seems ill-advised, Ill, Ill It certainly but... happened. It's almost... Do you all know about John Young and the space sandwich that he ate? I talked about this on Wonderful, so I apologize that I'm double-dipping, but there was an astronaut named John Young who was in the Gemini missions, and he was in a mission with a dude named Gus... Who I can't remember. I just love that there was a guy... Ah, Gus the this, astronaut! I'm Gus, and I'm in space! He was probably great. Um... <laughs> And there's a recording that you can find on YouTube of Gus like, uh, what you got there? And John Young's like, corned beef sandwich, brought it from home. And he just fucking eats it. And Gus is like, wow, you brought a sandwich from home? He's like, yeah, it stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> if that can happen, I don't see why you can't get like one joint up there in a fold of did yours. He, did he get it in trouble? Yeah, he got very much in trouble when he got home, yes. He, uh, was, for, he was reprimanded by Congress. <laughs> Hey, we all got together. We're angry about your sandwich, yeah. Joe. What, what are they going to do? They're like, you're not allowed to go to space. Like, <laughs> I already did. Yeah. You're not allowed to have sandwiches anymore. No! <laughs> the problem is he, he got in trouble when he came home. He shouldn't have came home. <laughs> it should have been like, um, I, hey, listen, we're super mad about the sandwich. And as soon as you get down here, like, I'm... Driving this bitch to Mars. Fuck <laughs> off. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Turn it around. Bye. Uh, how about a question from one of our friends uh, yes. sitting before us? I've got loads. I hosted a murder mystery party at my home for a dozen friends. Everyone had a great time solving a spooky vampire murder. 
Um, they wouldn't have told you if they didn't. I'm just saying, like, you went through a lot of... Also, but, couldn't you just get some garlic and smash it into all your friends' faces? Easy peasy, beautiful. That, wait, that's not how a murder mystery party works. I'm but just saying, if you're trying to find the vampire... Sorry, Justin. Okay. But the real crime wasn't discovered until the following morning. Evidently, one of my guests found their way down to the basement and relieved themselves directly into my sewing box. <laughs> filling it with an impressive amount of urine. There were no witnesses, and no one will admit to being the perpetrator. Brothers, this mystery has haunted me for months. Ah, a cold case. <laughs> How can I uncover the criminal behind this heinous act, and what do I do with this information once I have? That's uh, from Poor Man's Poirot. We would have also accepted Piss Poor Poirot. Yes. Would have been. Uh, well, I, I answer the second part first. Are you here? All right, eight of you. Couple of people are two in throats. That's singer. so weird that there's multiple people having this exact same situation. So once you figure out the information, you'll have them arrested. That's we'll start there. They're gonna go to jail for what they've done. <laughs> it's a crime. It is a crime. It's a crime. You know, a lot of those puzzles can be really difficult to figure out, and I could see getting to a point in like an escape room where you might think like, maybe I'm supposed supposed to piss in the sewing box. <laughs> the clues seem to be leading me towards the, the hint, I should piss in the sewing box. The hint screen flashes like, uh, dog, <laughs> I have to clean this up no, after no, everything. No, no, Don't no, no, no. Beep, 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 beep. Look up here. <laughs> I thought you were doing a haunted doll watch for a second. No, no, no. It's not, it doesn't work like that. Um, yeah, I mean, you got, the good news is you have so many options. Uh, did the original mystery come with a DNA test? I'm saying this out loud, and of course it didn't. Um, I said DNA test, like it was going to have a little like 23andMe thing that you could scoop some hot Is piss into. Is there DNA in urine? I'm willing to bet no. Yeah, there's no a lot of... audience poll time. <laughs> Is there? Yes, it's a resounding yes. Okay. A useless. Um, uh, um, I didn't mean to set off. Why did you guys even come? Of conversation. If you about, don't know the answer. Oh, maybe here's what you do. Here's what you do. Okay. Right. Right now, you probably call them. Like, did you pee in my sewing box? Right. I'm not gonna fess up to that. But if you go on and you're like, oh my god, somebody peed in the sewing box. It was hilarious. Yeah. Joke of the century. This person is the Banksy of piss. Yeah. Right. That's the kind of thing where someone's gonna be like, it was me. <laughs> and then you slap the cuffs on them. And then, and then. Banksy hears that and in a rage just like destroys his piss art he was working on. He had a, oh my God, this is something Banksy would do. Uh, no, don't... okay, I'm saying. I don't think so. Could it be Banksy? Think... Is one of your friends Banksy? I don't think it could be Banksy on is this Is their one. last name Banks? And this you is... just never put it together. <laughs> it do doesn't... they work at a bank? Do they live by a river? I don't think Banksy on this one. Here's what I would do. Send a group text to everybody who was at the party and say, bad news. <laughs> um, bad news. Uh, my dog pissed in my sewing box. I'm going to have her put down. Um, it's real. I'm real sad about it, but they, this, it said in a book that if they piss in your sewing box once, they're going to keep doing it, and I love to sew. So I've got a hatchet, and I'm going to put my dog down. <laughs> and, then, and then you just keep going and, like, describing it, and eventually one of them's going to fucking crack. Yeah. It may not even be the person who did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the pisser. No, no, I'm, no the pisser. I'm the pisser. <laughs> um, I'm Sparta piss. You will accept it. Um... I think you also have a great opportunity. I have been to exactly one murder mystery party in my life. It was really fun. I got blackout drunk before the thing even started. And spent, <laughs> How do you know it was fun then? I spent a lot of it doing deep breathing outside, but then they brought in this like cheesy garlic pull-apart bread. I got no clues. I have been desperate to participate in a second murder mystery party, but it's a real hassle to put those on. You have a baked-in second mystery party on your hands. You could say it's a Super Bowl party and then lock the door from the outside and say, we're not leaving here. Until so you everybody... lock the door from the outside, then you come back in through the window. Yeah. I've got 13 sewing kits here. 
You all know, know what to do. The person who steps forward first, suspicious. Yeah. I'm comfortable with this. And, oh, oops. Oh. You could also measure it by volume. <laughs> volume. Aroma. This is gross. Do you guys want a uh, Yahoo? Yes. Here's, a, here's one I was sent in by a few people. Thank you, uh, a few people. It was asked by Yahoo Answers user Emily, who asks, what non-toxic additions can you put into handmade soap to jazz it up? <laughs> I'm learning to make soap so that I have a nice handmade gift to give to coworkers, friends, etc. I was wondering if there are any non-toxic additions I can add to it. I've tried apricot seeds, for example, and may try glitter. Thanks for your help. Don't do glitter. Not glitter, though. Update. Edit. Definitely won't use glitter. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Good thing I never made any glitter soaps. Ha <laughs> ha. You could put other soap in the middle. You didn't even need to think about that no, one. No, yeah, if somebody gave me some handmade soap and as I was washing my hand in the middle was a bar of Irish Spring, I'd be really excited. <laughs> I wouldn't wash my worst enemy's grundle with Irish Spring. I don't know what good, what is good bar soap these days? I'll tell you what it is. It's that dove shit from the commercials where they pour it like a thing of milk and it forms the bar. When yeah. I was a kid, I saw that shit every time. I thought, that looks delicious. Was that their intention? <laughs> there was a long time, there was a long time when I was a kid where I believed scientifically you were not fully clean unless you were <laughs> that fully sure. clean. Sure. I you, think you could put a key in there. Ooh. Ooh. A What's, key to what? Ooh, exactly. Ooh. ooh. I'm, ooh. Cl I'm clean and curious. <laughs> mm. A key. What about a juicy fruit center? <laughs> like, a, like a gusher. Like a fruit gusher. Mm, like a gusher. What about dirt? It would be tough to get to it while it's still good to go. Potable, In fact, yeah. The moment the fruit juice touches the soapy interior, it's, it's, you know. Have... at that point, what you've basically set up is like a center of fake blood. Yeah, that time. Kind of like, oh, no, there's, no! Still, there's still a time where it's potable, but time lost is flavor, lo flavor loss. You need to crack that thing out of the box. It just really just, <laughs> <laughs> like Rafiki at the beginning of The Lion King, just like, ah! snap it over your face. Okay, wait, I would like to make a pitch. Yes. Soap on the outside. Yes. Mud on the inside. <laughs> More soap in the middle. I love this. That, that's an afternoon right there. Yeah, you come back around. I do. I tell you, Trav. Holy shit. That's a good idea. <laughs> listen. Listen. And this doesn't Not. have to be nasty if you don't want it to be. But doesn't everybody like getting a little muddy sometimes? <laughs> right? And you know how, like, with an iPhone, they design it to break after a while, so you have to buy a new one? Maybe in the middle of the soap, there's just a tiny little bit of mud just yeah. to finish it off. And you're like, well, now I've got to go back to the store and buy more of this specific <laughs> soap because all of his soaps have been bought up by Travis and, I don't know, been ended. Travis has ended all soap with that mud soap. I hate this new dystopian future in which we live. What if you just, what if a soap shaped like a canteen and it's filled with water and then you got everything you need? <laughs> If you're ever on Survivor or any other sort of island thing, you got everything you need. You got water from your canteen, and of, then the canteen with soap. That is, the canteen is soap, so you can clean yourself because they don't have soap on the island for sure. And water is in short supply, so you, it's a canteen made of soap. You see, and it's filled with water. Water that has been in contact with soap. Yeah, because that, that's how you know that the water is free of germs. Hell yeah. And safe. Clean your fucking tummy out. I love this. <laughs> Plus, if the soap gets hard in the sun, you can use it as a hatchet to chop down some bamboo. You're not going to need the bamboo because you got your soap canteen and all your needs are being catered to. Uh, Damn, I, Justin, that was a good idea, bud. Thanks. Thanks. I'm uh, uh, unappreciated in my time. Uh, here's another question. I've worked at a large university, and when I was hired, I RSVP'd to compete in a salsa contest. But I became so... I, I like the use of RSVP there instead of just, like, signed up. Yeah, volunteered. But I became so busy that, I, that suddenly the day of the contest was at hand, and I hadn't made any salsa. Rather than you can't go that long without specifying what kind of salsa you're talking about. Fair. Uh... 
Uh, blah, 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 blah. Rather than back out, I decided to run to my local Chili's and ask them to fill a jar of salsa for me th- so that I could enter. I ended up winning the contest. It's now been eight years, and people still ask me for the recipe. Oh my. I've brushed off so many people that it's now built my salsa up, up as some sort of mystical super salsa. I love it when Goku goes super salsa. <laughs> <laughs> Over 9,000 Scoville units. It was 9,000. The number was 9,000. Aw, geek check. Damn it. Uh, that no one has tasted since then because I'm afraid they'll definitely know it's chilies if I bring it into the office. Brothers, what do I do? I can't keep living this lie. That's from Bluffing in Boulder, Colorado. Normally we would ask if normally we'd ask if you're here, but I feel like if I just looked, I would know who you are. <laughs> uh, but are, are are you here? All right. Okay. Okay. There is a lot to discuss here, but just real quick, I want to talk about one tiny element that jumped out at me. When you went to Chili's and asked them to fill up a jar, did you present the jar to them? Yeah. That's or did a they good just question. have a jar ready for such a request? And Trav, I got to tell you, bud, and it's good. Like, we all come at these questions from different angles. That's what creates the heat of the cauldron that boils up the soup of my brother, my brother, and me. That would have been about question 46 on okay. my list. My first being, why didn't you go to the fucking grocery s- store where salsa is traditionally sold instead of trying to get back channel salsa? <laughs> From the baby back ribs place. I kind of feel like we need this person like, on mic. I feel like you need to come to the mic. There's a lot is of things a, we need to go you through. Is that okay? To, no pressure. You don't have to. Listen. Can we get a little? If you're not comfortable, that's fine. Stay seated. It's not a if big deal. If you're not deal. comfortable, just right now yell no. Uh, okay. okay. Wait, no, no, coming. no. Hold on. Don't cheer. Okay, wait. This can is we, not a peer pressure can scenario. Can we get some uh, house lights, please? Oh, or, yeah. There we yeah, are. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Are, you, are you cool with this? Hi, hello. Do you is feel comfortable okay? giving us your name? Absolutely. I'm Vanessa. Hi, you Vanessa. didn't even have to do the last name. Yeah, but I didn't here do we the are. last name. I, good luck with Facebook. Um, I, I saw, I saw coworkers here. Okay. Oh, no. Vanessa. Only one. Why did you come to the mic? Vanessa, this is not a place for confession. Okay. Oh no. Okay, now everybody, please be quiet. I need to talk to Vanessa. Vanessa, why didn't you go to the grocery store? I didn't, I thought that I might have a chance to win with the chili sauce. I knew it. Okay. Okay. I knew it. So, Vanessa, I love this because what I like about you, Vanessa, is that you were like sitting there like, who's got the fucking best salsa in Boulder? (laughs) Best salsa in Boulder? It's got to be chilies. (laughs) Vanessa? I was so worried that they would know it was chilies that I actually but watered it so down. Wait, 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 I on. watered it down with other tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, hold on, hold on. Where did you get those fucking tomatoes from? <laughs> you had tomatoes then, so at your you house. You had 98% of souls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Vanessa, I, I don't know why I do this, but I was, I'm ready to absolve you right now. <laughs> Because the good news is, this is your salsa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is your salsa. You, 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 this is, there was a bunch of people at your office who have said to themselves, I love chili salsa, of course. It's just not tomato enough for me. <laughs> it's a and little you, too, too zesty. A little too zesty. I love it to be muddled and watered down with some tomatoes. You could, the next time someone asks you, you can say, all right, fine, here's my secret. Got some tomatoes. They can go to Chili's and bully them into putting some salsa yeah. in a jar. But leave some How room in there it. for those tomatoes. How did the, can you fill my loose jar with salt? I ago? did bring a jar for it. You did bring a jar for did it. Did you have, did you pay by the pound? Did you have muddled up tomato mash at the bottom of the jar? And No, no, but I did like put a special little like thing on top of it to decorate it. Sure. And then I called it Vanessa's awesome sauce. Come on. Vanessa. Now, Vanessa, How, bridge too far, Vanessa. Do you want to like, should we stop talking while you finish listing the many crimes you committed during this heinous act? I, it was a prize. I was money. What was that the prize? Oh, how much? 
Uh, it was 50 bucks. Nice. Yeah. How much was the salsa? <laughs> The salsa was about ten dollars. I had just started like two weeks before, right. so. I- oh, you wanted to establish yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if anybody asks you the recipe, Justin's right. You, this is your own thing. You just say it's, uh, it's flavorless, watery tomatoes and deceit. And uh, Vanessa, does that help? That helps. Thank, Thank you. you, Vanessa. Thank for you for being here. Thing. Thank you. You can bring the house lights down now. Once Vanessa's safely back to her seat, you can. I lower, mean, you can go ahead and lower the house lights now. I believe. Oh no, Vanessa's okay. There we go. Good. I just don't want Vanessa. And there they up. go. And there they go. Crawling I, down. My object down. permanence. Yeah, and out Listen go to the, the sound of lights. my voice. The there house lights are gone. The lights are dimming around you. Be not yes. afraid. This is an experience we're all having together. We're uh, all so they old. put in a switch to turn them on, and they're frantically like, uh, "Guys, do these go off?" <laughs> and the lights and are dimming. Like, see, now I'm freaking out because it looks like they're dimming, but I think I'm just losing my mind. Okay, whatever. We'll keep doing the show. But I want to move on. The please do turn the lights off. Here's, are yay. Oh, okay. Here's a Yahoo. I was sent in by Rob uh, Luppy or Loopy. Uh, almost certainly not. It's Yahoo Answers user another part of me who asks. And God, holy shit, I should have prefaced this. This is going to be a fun one. You guys get to play your games all the time. I feel like you guys bring games to the show. This one's going to be fun for me because I kind of know what's going on, and you won't, and it's going to be a real hoot and a half. Okay. Another part of me asks, boy zone scenario? (laughs) Okay, it's your birthday. Woot, woot, LMAO. Whoop, whoop. Your parents take wait, you out. Wait, hold on. Nothing you just said would make someone laugh their ass off. <laughs> it's your birthday. <laughs> I get it. Great. It is. I was, uh, I was born on this day. Thank you for your laughter. Your parents take you out to a lush restaurant, and you need to use the toilet. But leading towards the back door, there's a trail of ink. This is the first mystery in this question. <laughs> you follow it, and Bam! Boys owner standing outside. <laughs> what would you do? X, XD? XD? Ah. Oh, I see. Big face. I'm not done. Pets greater than sign birds. <laughs> Emoticon where like one eye is kind of big and then there's a flat mouth and then a small mouth. Update. WTF at Diana. Big eye, flat mouth, little eye. Begin! <laughs> you have entered my Chad labyrinth. Chad McElroy, do you understand this Yahoo answer? No. <laughs> Griffin McElroy, do you understand this Yahoo answer? Only what a cursory Google search has okay. taught me. And I'm at a no. This is a no. No, we no. Can't no. Google. Still reply, no, no Google. Uh, okay, so. here's what I do know. Yes. They have said that birds are better than pets. Yep. No, pets are better than birds. Oh, uh, well, could birds not include birds would be in pets? Yeah, to some people, extremely this is much. Chilling. So. Yeah. Um, my phone a friend is gonna be who what what's a boy's <laughs> I assume it's a boy band? Here, let me frame it to you in a more sort of coherent sort of story. Okay. And then you guys can tell me what you do. Okay. You're at a lush restaurant. Your parents yes. took you there. <laughs> okay. You have to go to the toilet. Got it. There's a trail of ink on the floor. Okay, I have a lot of Stop. questions. Okay. <laughs> you follow the trail of ink. And you find yourself in the boy zone. What do you do? Are, is boy zone like a team of squids? So, no. Is, is it, um, is this, what's the, um, You don't have to guess what boy zone is. Just tell me what the fuck you do. You no. follow, no. You follow the ink. You arrive at boy zone. I just, I can't. I, ha- I can't determine through context clues if I'm excited or dismayed. Damn it! What would you do? <laughs> Is this- I'd probably start fighting my way out. That, I'll take that answer. Is this a... Sp- I'll give you a clue. You'll be outnumbered. <laughs> Is this a Splatoon thing? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> See, well, this it- is what I love. You guys are thinking about the ink. You haven't, your minds haven't even conceived of the boy zone yet. 
if I, I think I would stay perfectly still and wait for the boy zone to... <laughs> to migrate away. Migrate or... Oh, I'd make myself big <laughs> to see if I could scare them away. That That's might good. work. Threaten the boy zone. Yeah. <laughs> Are they covered in ink? I don't believe so. <laughs> Are they like 17th century poets? Here, I can give you, I can give, I can give you another clue. It's from Dirty Diana, so that's Mystery One Solved. Okay. Who says, uh, best answer, by the way. I see Ronan, and he says, you look gorgeous tonight. I blush as he bites his bottom lip. Then the rest is left to the imagination. I'll get reported. LMA, whoa, 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 whoa. So that would be laughing my ass. Blah, 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 blah. There it goes. It's just flopping across the floor. So... When the, he bites his lip, yep. and the rest that's left of the imagination is he eats his lip. Yeah, some ink dribbles out. <laughs> the ink dribbles out there's of his a, mouth. And this is there's a Ronin in the group? There like is. A, this is like a samurai without a master, right? Is that yeah. the Ronin? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to reevaluate my standing still. Yeah. I don't believe that'll be a match for the Ronin skills. Yeah. He's trained for that sort of thing. You all aren't even considering the possibility it's a good thing. That maybe the boys' zone is just a fun place where boys can go and be boys <laughs> in their zone. Well, if I'm allowed final to be answer, a boy. Final answer. What do you do when confronted with the boys' zone, Travis? I'd probably start screaming for my parents. Out of? Huh? Fear? Excitement? I'm probably concern. Okay. Justin. I would, I would ask for their autograph on their CD. Justin wins! Yeah. Oh. They're an Irish boy band. Okay. They of were active uh, 1993 to 2000. Wow, they got a fucking ahead of the game, huh? That's they a, got in and they got out. And then, well, they did, and then they got in because they're active now, 2007 it's to present. It's a man band now. It's, yes, it's a well. Man zone. Man. man zone. Welcome to Man Place. <laughs> Thank you for playing my game. I got so excited. I saw Boy Zone and I instantly bookmarked it. Do I didn't you, even need to think fucking twice. Do you twice. have any information vis-a-vis uh, -vis pets and birds? Oh, no. <laughs> what? Pets, pets and birds, ink, lots of stuff. It, the ink was unclear. The ink is a huge part of this. Yep. Because you would see the ink and think, maybe this will lead me to Boy Zone. Listen, we spent way too long on Boy Zone and I can admit that. What's the next question, Justin? Last year, my partner and I bought a house with a large Mickey Mouse sculpture mailbox. I don't like it very much, but I don't know how to get rid of slash destroy it. I also kind of feel bad removing it as the previous owners sculpted it themselves. Any suggestions on how to deal with this massive mouse? And it says picture attached for scale. Let me see that bad boy. From too much mouse in Broomfield. Um, I'm going to show it to y'all. You're not going to be able to see great, but it is, it's a, the size. Oh, it's the size it's of a full grown man. Size of a full grown man. And it seems to be made of stone. When I was reading this question initially, I thought, stop asking us questions that can be fixed by spin kicks. If you can spin kick it away, don't bring it to our desk. You would just break your fucking foot. Yeah. It's a very large mouse, and it's Fantasia era Mickey, which is among his most powerful forms. Sure. I, I, will, I will say, that's, a, that's you're going to have to move, friendo. Credit where credit is due. It's a well-sculpted Mickey. That's Beautiful. great. But credit, Though, I, I will point out, the mailbox seems like kind of an afterthought. Sure. It's um, not in his belly or anything. Just one quick correction. You did say um, that it was your house. I believe if you really think about it, 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 it is the statue of Mickey Mouse's house. It is the, it is the house of Mouse, you could say. And um, you are live you, in the Mickey Mouse Club house, and I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Are, can you, I, can are I you here, by the way? Hold on. Why are you here? Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hi. not to pile on, but you did see it when you first considered buying the house, right? It didn't surprise you. You can't say no because you can see it from space. <laughs> you probably thought, well, certainly they'll take that with them. There's no reason they would leave behind this beautiful art of the mouse. They would want to take it to their next home. Um, 
Could you, here's a thought. Yes. Could you have the city redraw the bounds of your property <laughs> so that the mouse is no longer... Just sort of... The mouse becomes a small park yeah. at this point. The, the oh, yeah, children, pocket park. No longer your problem. It's just a local park. Ooh. As long as we're coming up with ideas for having the city fix it, if you carve a... a a ding dong onto Mickey Mouse. I don't think the city will let it exist there, sort of street side. Dicky Mouse. I feel like Di- Travis is just. Could could you call Disney and tell them there's a copyright violation? Yeah. In your yard? Yes. Yes. It seems like they'd take care of it, and maybe you. If they don't, you have to start building other Disney-themed mailboxes next to it <laughs> until it's just like they can't ignore it anymore. Once you got fucking Ant-Man <laughs> and Baloo the Bear and all the, you know. All the hit characters. All the great Disney characters. Yeah, Justin, all the main Disney the stays. The big Disney, the big Mickey, names. Mickey, Ant-Man, Baloo. <laughs> Lilo, Stitch, whatever. It's a big mailbox, though. Yeah, hey, I kept hey. the picture up because I didn't want to this to become a joke to me. I needed to it to stay real because yeah. there's real people that are affected by this very large mouse. Hey, what? A, hey, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, but really, <laughs> it's a big it's, fucking mailbox. I'm so gonna go big. fly home to West Virginia tomorrow, and you're still gonna have this mouse. <laughs> we can make a lot of jokes up here, but a lot of fun at your expense. But yours, the mouse will still remain. <laughs> The mouse it will be there soon. long after you die. Yeah, yeah. Lo- nothing will move this mouse. Yeah, oh, good luck. Oh, oh, do you want a water feature in your front yard? If so, maybe just some sort of ramp that pushes the water upwards. We'll have to get some sort of uh, engineers. I'm not one. That just slowly drips water down onto the Mickey statue. Oh, and erodes, yeah, erodes the over, Mickey statue over, over a, time. a period of millennia. <laughs> If you're like me, a lazy person, you probably looked at that mouse and you bought the house and thought, I like Mickey. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, learn, I'll learn to get into Mickey more so that I could be a, someone with an affection commiserate with this size and heft of a statue uh, surrounding my mailbox. Um, you probably blow it up. Blow it up with a bomb. Blow it up. It's just the thing you could do. I've watched a lot of Mythbusters. I, I would imagine. You call the Mythbusters, say like, hey, I got a myth. Um, can you <laughs> blow up a Mickey mailbox <laughs> any which way? Ha <laughs> ha, challenge accepted. I got him again. Um, can you take my, uh, is, you, it's a myth, can you take my trash out? <laughs> I, I, I don't know what the connotation is but I have to imagine that the, this mailbox has become extremely significant to your mail carrier. <laughs> oh, this, no. this is either how they start their day, end their day, a good like, well, I'm one third done, there's Mickey. <laughs> I know, time for lunch. <laughs> I'm so tired, but I'm one step closer to Mickey. So. I do get to see Mickey at the end of my day, and I <laughs> do love that zany mouse. There's also... There's... And then the day he delivers the bomb you will use to explode the Mickey statue will be the sweetest, <laughs> coolest irony of his life. <laughs> there's a very good chance that they sold this house because of the Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like, mean to build it so big. <laughs> He's, whoever the owner was started carving it and then finished was like, what have I done? <laughs> this was supposed to be Goofy. I did such a bad job. You don't want to fucking give Goofy your mail. Listen, guys, my son became a big fan of that whole universe when we went to Disney earlier this year. You cannot trust Goofy with mail. That dude can't accomplish anything without showing his whole ass. <laughs> Can I do a Yahoo? Yeah. This, this one was sent in by Nathan Spree- Justin, I feel like you're still distracted by how you're big really the mailbox is. You're really looking at the big is. Mickey statue. It's so big and it'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's one sent in by... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Consider the possibility. 
You might find the Yahoo enjoyable also. It was sent in by Nathan Smith. I'm gonna have to yeah, take, turn take, it off. Yeah, take, thank you. Nathan Smith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me this. Okay. Yeah. Nathan Smith sent this in. Thank you, Nathan. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. I'm going to call Dickie who asks. <laughs> <laughs> is, <clears throat> is a vegan allowed to eat extremely wafer thin ham? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, listen. Listen. Your gut instinct is going to say no. The ham. What if I told you I can get it so fucking thin? You, you, could, you could put it in front of you and hold it with both hands and blow, and it would turn into a bubble and fly away. So thin, this ham. Could you hide it in other vegetables it was so No, thin. it can't be a trick. They have to mindfully eat the thin ham. They will say, I can't do this with anything else. This ham's so fucking thin, I can see my <laughs> it friends It doesn't even count. I can see you through it. It's the thinnest ham, there, there's barely a, their ham. There is a thinness of ham where, statistically speaking, you're not even really eating ham. Yes. 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 You're, you're inhaling ham. You're breathing ham in. Yeah. No, that's got to have some chew to it. Yeah, okay. and the ham flavor that makes it so delicious and desirable. Will be present. Is there, is there a thinness of ham that you could walk through it like a cobweb and get some in your mouth? <laughs> Who hung all this ham here? This is, ah, ah. this is Travis's fucked up reboot of Charlotte's Web where they switch places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was some pig. Hey, this wait, is, hey, your fucking ceiling pig has written cool spider and ham. <laughs> <laughs> this is a thinness of ham where Wilbur should be able to peel them off of himself. Okay, right? that's it. This is... Cruelty free. We are talking. Well, a little cruel. <laughs> no, you it's... are shaving a, a pig. It's, you, know, you get it's, it. it's cruelty free. It's like peelings, like yeah. sunburn. You know, oh, you get some oh, yeah. get some pumice stone in the pig pen. Whatever they rub off. Ham dandruff, basically. It's <laughs> ham dandruff. Ham yes. dandruff. Yeah, it's pressed ham dandruff, basically. Fine. I, I need you all to take over the show for 10 minutes while I write out the entire spec script to Wilbur's ham zone because it's, I, I, my mind is just racing with possibilities. The, the farmers would not like the huge spider in their barn. Wilbur would have his a, a, a pretty tough road to hoe ahead of him. <laughs> Listen, we got to do a pretty strong BR campaign here. There's a, uh, get the gun. There's a big monster spider in the barn. What's it saying ham up there? No, don't. <laughs> think of the tax benefits? Shit, I didn't think about that. <laughs> What's it saying the ham up there is one of the best sentences I've ever heard. What's it say? Hold on. Let's read the ham first, John. <laughs> Wait, read the ham. What's it say? Its blood is acidic and will get on you and you'll die? Damn, yeah. all right. Can't shoot the spider yeah. yet. Thanks, Thanks for the warning, <laughs> ceiling pig. <laughs> the ham up there is my favorite movie starring Kevin Bacon. Hey. There was two. There's two in it. <laughs> these guys too right? much too much too fast these guys these are they real brothers you know i've heard that it's all a government conspiracy uh speaking of a government conspiracy for your genitals that's how we like to refer to me undies yeah you know you can get everything you need for you and your loved ones at me undies finish your holiday shopping right now uh, with this delicious micromodal fabric, which is three times softer than cotton. Do they have holiday prints? They do. They do. They make great stock stocking stuffers. And uh, there's a special just for our listeners. If you're a first time purchaser, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 15% off and free shipping. And hey, running a little bit behind with your Christmas shopping, good news. Get a MeUndies gift card. You can do that shit Christmas morning, probably, yep. I bet. Probably on your phone or something. Then Maybe, show them, I don't know. Show like, them on your phone. Show them. Hey, make them watch you buy it. 
<laughs> Get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee when you go to MeUndies.com slash MyBrother. That's MeUndies.com slash MyBrother. And once you finish putting a Santa Claus on your on your duff, why don't you go to Stitch Fix and put something on over those nasty things? <laughs> Hey, Stitch Fix is good. It's an online personal styling service that finds and delivers clothes, shoes, and accessories that fit your body, budget, and lifestyle. I gotta say, my uh, my my shopper, my stylist, has really dialed in on on my shit. Uh, not only on my styles, but like the the fit on everything has been so choice lately. They help me realize, Justin, my legs are considerably shorter than I used to think they were. I would wear those jeans and I would get the holes at the bottoms of them like a skater. And it's because my my freaking pant legs were too long. They helped me dial that shit in and now my clothes fit better than ever. Uh, so it's great. You go to stitchfix.com slash my brother. You tell them your sizes, what you like, style wise, your budget. They're going to pick a stylist for you who's going to pick items that they're going to send right to your door and you only pay for what you love and you can return the rest. You get uh, shipping and your exchanges and your returns. They're always free. Uh, and the styling fee is just 20 bucks, which is applied towards anything that you keep from each box. So get started now at stitchfix.com slash my brother. Uh, that's all one word. Obviously, it's a URL. And you'll get an extra 25% off when you keep all the items in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother to get started today. Stitchfix.com slash my brother. Well, uh, those are all the sponsor messages for this week. Uh, we hope you're enjoying yourself with this uh, delightful episode and uh, thank you uh, yeah. for, for listening we appreciate you thank you to Denver for coming out it was one of the most rowdy shows we've done in, in a long time and it was a lot of fun uh, we have a new website we are going to keep talking about it for I don't know a little bit until people get sick of it which may be now but if you go to McElroy.family or the McElroy.family uh, you can find our website. It's uh, we we teamed up with Vox to make it. Uh, we are we're still on the Max Fun Network, and in fact, all of the shows we do on Max Max Fun and off are uh, on McElroy dot family you can find them there you can find new merch announcements uh and you can find general news like for instance this week we're probably going to be announcing uh, an upcoming tour so uh cool. keep keep an eye on mcelroy dot family to uh to find out more and you know also our, our social social channels uh thanks for listening and uh, we'll be back with you again soon bye Hello, Maximum Fun. I am Oliver Wong, scholar, journalist, DJ, etc. And I'm Morgan Rold. I'm a music supervisor who loves stilettos. We host Heat Rocks, a music podcast where we talk to influential artists and scholars about the albums that changed their lives. On our most recent episode, we had the chance to talk with none other than R&B legend Macy Gray mm. about one of her favorite albums, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy by <laughs> Yeezy. We get deep talking about everything from Kanye's college dropout days all the way up to his most recent shenanigans. I just think it's weak and I don't think he has to do that and, and I was just disappointed. So make sure you, dear listener, are subscribed because you definitely do not want to miss this conversation. Heat rocks every Thursday right here on Maximum Fun. Uh, how about another question? Yeah, another guy. <laughs> Just start reading it. Here is one sent in. No, no, you'll mess me up. It's like That's rhythmless, not his free tempo. form kind of. Okay. I want to munch. I want to munch. Welcome to Munch Squad. The only podcast segment within a uh, built in with our own wet bar. Cocktail artist, <laughs> Paul Saborin. I like that Paul said I shouldn't bring Justin a full bottle of liquor while he's doing the stinger for Munch Squad because who knows what might happen. Hey, big ups to Denver. Hooked your boy up with the Hennessy VSOP privilege. Thank you. We still got a lot of show left. Sonic ads, Fritos, chili cheese faves. Starting at 99 cents. You know, folks, if something's your fave, 
the price should be immaterial. <laughs> if it's truly your chili cheese fave, you shouldn't need that 99 cents to be appended there. It could be $70, $80. You still buy it because it's your fave. But starting at just 99 cents, guests can order the Sonic Fritos Chili Pie and Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap along with the Fritos Fritos Chili Cheese. Sorry, 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 sorry. You can't, you can't have possibly said that correctly. <laughs> sorry. That can't Travis, be can please confirm? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> The Fritos Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Burger. The Fritos Fritos Chili Burger Burger Brought Chili you by Cheese Fritos. Cheese Fritos Fritos. This is when the Munch Squad robot became sentient <laughs> and insane. <laughs> Fritos Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Burger. That's starting at one ninety nine, Sonic, folks. Human Whilst beings would have to order that with their mouths. Yeah. I, I like and a eat it. Frito Frito Chili Chili <laughs> Cheese Burger Burger Burger. We eat it and start the fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Sonic Drive-In is taking the quirky uh, That doesn't word doesn't mean fucking anything anymore, eh? The quirky, comforting flavors of a beloved snack And making it available for any location, anytime By adding new Fritos chili cheese options to a variety of menu items With at least three ways to add a warm, salty, and savory crunch to any meal the new Sonic Fritos Chili Cheese Faves start at just 99 cents. So, what are these faves? Well, the Fritos Chili Pie is made with crunchy Fritos, savory chili, and topped with melty cheddar cheese. Good. The Fritos, I, know, I know this friend. This friend I'm familiar with, and I enjoy his work. The Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap includes the same delicious ingredients bundled up in an 8-inch flour tortilla. Stop. To create a perfect bite every time. In whose mouth is this a perfect bite? Shrek? The Fritos... The Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Burger. Okay, so the name of the menu item is not actually, apparently, the Fritos Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Burger. But I think it is very indicative of the person writing this press release. They look at the name of it and they think, there's got to be some more Fritos in there somewhere. <laughs> it doesn't look right. I want to put another Fritos at the beginning. And see if that does it. Anyway, the Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Burger is made with Fritos, chili, yeah. and melty cheddar cheese atop a juicy 100% beef patty. I like the 100% beef patty because um, that indicates the person is really obsessed with making sure their meat is all natural with no filler, <laughs> and they just are going to put some Fritos on top of it. Uh, so it's sandwiched between a soft bakery bun. Cool bakery you got there. What are you going to use the buns for? Well, I'm going to slop some chips in there and then some other trash and sell it for a dollar. I don't know. I'm not a very good baker. My, my father is very disappointed in me. Amp, and you can amp up a Sonic classic by creating one more option by adding Fritos to the chili cheese coney. That's right, folks. You can go fucking off menu and just be like, is there anything else you can put Fritos in? Because I'm crazy about these little corn chips. So here's the quote. This is from Scott Eulin, Vice President of Product Innovation and Development for Sonic. Quote, the bowl flavor combination of crispy Fritos with mouth-watering chili and melty cheese is both incredibly classic and unique at the same time. Hey, Scott, what are we doing here? What are we playing at? <laughs> Scott, what are we doing Adding, quote, adding the uniquely delicious and salty bite of Fritos. <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking Fritos! <laughs> to adding the Fritos-flavored Fritos from Fritos that you know as Fritos? And Dylan, say, it's Scott. I need you to come into my office. But when you come, bring every word if anyone's <laughs> ever written about Fritos. Because I need to find some other things to say about Fritos. I'm not an expert, but the way that sentence is constructed, it does say uniquely something and, but that would be uniquely salty taste of Fritos. Yes. Like you would taste the salt of Fritos and be like, that's a salt I've is never this, had is before. This Himalayan sea salt? This is incredible. The uniquely salty bite of Fritos, <laughs> chili, and cheese was something many had had to hack menus to get. Thank you, you brave pioneers. 
And now people Some even had to bring their own Fritos. It's unbelievable. People can now people can order their faves in three craveable ways right from their cars. That's it. That's That's it. You got to they want you to eat this in your car. That's the same one that you're going to drive your spouse to when they deliver your first child. And you're going to eat a Frito pie in there on a hamburger, on french fries, on a corn dog, on a milkshake. <laughs> that you're going to eat that in your own car. And, uh, you know, it's starting at just 99 cents. Guests can order the Sonic Fritos Chili Pie and Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap along with the Fritos. Okay, now here it says Fritos, Fritos, Chili Cheese, Junior Burger. Okay, that's two out of three, folks. It's called the Fritos, Fritos, Chili Cheese, Junior Burger. That's starting at $1.99 while supplies last. Get in there and get those three craveable. Hey, folks, if you ever find yourself as part of your job writing the word craveable, go home. (laughs) Donate everything you own to charity. (laughs) Walk the world doing good for others <laughs> because you have so much to atone for. <laughs> and you have you have to start now. You've gone horribly awry, and you have to fix it all right now. Uh, and anyway, that's the latest and greatest from Sonic. They talk. Thank you for listening to Much Squad. They talk a lot in there about the different ways, without ever saying you could just order some Fritos if you want them. What if I just hey, want a bag hey, full of Fritos? Hey, shits. Maybe you could buy a bag of Fritos and put them on whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> like, you don't have to come to Sonic to get Fritos. <laughs> Just bring your own Fritos. Let's uh, do the audience questions. How about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Do not, uh, don't, let's get those eyes up. Don't get up. We have a new way of doing this. I, I don't say this is our first show in Denver, which, by the way, sorry. Um, <laughs> y'all should come are, sooner. Yeah, we should come here sooner. You guys are great. Hey, Nick, what do you do with bread, pal? Uh, okay, so I take about sometimes four to five slices of bread and just, like, mash them up into a ball uh, and just eat it like it's a big apple. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. The I saw is- someone behind you enthusiastically like, yes, good, yes, good. <laughs> uh, I... Uh, I and the re- the- wait, and what's the... Re- that's just a statement of fact of what you do. What do you need our help with? How do I not do that? Yeah, why do you... Okay. <laughs> I did this. When I was in elementary school and you get the school <laughs> rolls. Oh, yeah. I would take the, the bread meat out of the husk. <laughs> and I would roll the bread meat back into its dough state. You know, that's what you're returning. It, ashes to ashes, dough to dough. <laughs> returning the bread to its dough state. And then I would eat it in that state. And you know what? It was good. It was good. It was like it was a little good. gumball of bread. <laughs> Nick, do you often find yourself like rolling the bread out thinking like, what am I doing? No! Yeah. It's, uh, it's a process because most of the time I kind of just peel off the crust first and then sure. eat that and then Oh, Jesus do that. Christ, man. Okay, come on. No, I um, won't you. fucking come on. <laughs> you, come, you come on. Back to this, the light of reason. <laughs> Can I? But like, it's... it's what I do you like about this? It's chewier. It's chewy. Okay, wait. It's all the same bread, right? No, 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 no. In wadding it up, you've changed the... Whose side are you on? I'm turning over to Nick's side, actually, because I'm thinking about it. And uh, do you watch, uh, like, Great British Bake Off whenever, like, Paul Hollywood... <laughs> whenever yeah, Paul, I do. Whenever Paul Hollywood is like, this is leaden and stodgy, you see that, and you're like, mm, fuck, send it over this way, Paul. This has no air in it. You didn't let it rise. And you're like, yum, yum, give me some of that bad bread, Paul Hollywood. <laughs> I wish every once in a while Paul Hollywood would take four or five slices of the break- baker's treat <laughs> and roll it into a ball and eat it like an apple. With his big hands. <laughs> I can't really taste it unless I do it the traditional British way. <laughs> no, okay, hold on. There's an element of this question where Nick is saying, how do I stop doing this? And you're both like, nah. Don't, dude. It's the chase your bliss. The Why? question was it, I do this and I love it. How do I keep doing it? I used to dip into the pepperoni bag in the refrigerator and pull some out and put it in a single slice of white bread. Then I would crush it in my fist like I was Thanos claiming a fucking <laughs> reality gym. And then I put that in the microwave for like 10 seconds. I'm yum, 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 pepperoni roll, but not. Roll. It's yes. not, it's not, it's God. not. I yeah, really, I Nick, really don't Nick, think you, you should be fil- giving me more uh, fuel. No, I will do it. Do that. Yeah. No, this is great. 
Fucking chase your bliss. I'm serious, Nick. Eat your bread. How life's short. If it makes you happy, fucking eat your bread the weird way you eat it, like a, like a, a believe in your neck. Sure. Never Do give it. up. Did uh, that help? Did that help? Okay. Yeah, sure. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you, Nick. Hi. Hi, I'm Hannah. Sorry, I didn't put my name in the email. Um, it's so a very important uh, context for the question is that it's 2018. Yes. yes. And that will become very clear when <laughs> You're I... You're an alien who found this in a, like, satellite. You never know. Like, they might be. Um, and so my mom works for the news, and she uh, is, like, a new media developer and, like, works for, like, Holy internet shit. news and whatever. She's, like, big and important. But, uh, so, like, in her work, she's very, like, new content, whatever. And then in her home life, she, in the year 2018, still uses AOL as a web browser. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And I honestly didn't know that was a thing that was still like f- you could physically do. Like I thought that they had sort of, uh, I don't know. There's one person still at out. the other end of the computer like, I'll check. And it's, then they Google it. Linda's and then type here. it back and send it back. I, I got her. She's on the internet today. And I've stood over while she's, you know, like in college and whatever. And now I'm like trying to like load any web page. But it's like, you know, hey, let's look at getting you health insurance. And I'll be like leaning over her. Shoulder waiting for like a full minute for a web page to load because it's sure. on AOL in the year 2018. And I've, I've tried to be like, hey, mom, Linda, uh, here's Google Chrome or any other web browser. Sure, okay. So my question is, how do I get my mom, who is again a professional like internet journalist, to stop using AOL as a web browser in the year 2018? <laughs> I mean, it's unfathomable. It's unfathomable. Can you just snap the disc over your leg? <laughs> It's already installed. Like, there's no more disk. It's already installed. Like, I, I could uninstall it from the computer. She's got but an AOL dev kit from. I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, could, I don't know how to get it off. Why don't you download Google Chrome, but then set the home page to AOL.com? Because then she'll still get all the great content that she craves. <laughs> Folks. Speaking as someone who, until uh, 2012, was employed by AOL. <laughs> A lot of people go to AOL.com. It's a kind of a gross number of people definitely go to AOL.com as their homepage. It's a, we're talking about the AOL web browser, which is a whole nother yeah, category. Yes, no, but I'm saying AOL is a popular yeah, outlet. They got a lot of great content. That's the first thing. Shit. Okay. Maybe just tell her, like, AOL closed. <laughs> unplug, no un- unplug the router. <laughs> AOL Mom, must the internet's done. There's down. no more internet. You start, Sorry. You should start by installing Netscape Navigator. Because yeah, you're right. <laughs> if you got a bill. You can't jump right into the deep end. You're right, yeah. you're right, you're right. Uh, yeah, and it's still, if anyone's curious, it still looks the same as it did oh, sure, in, that, sure. in 1999. I'll tell so. you, sometimes when I do Google something, I get so many results back, it scares me. I would love to just type in the keyword new applesauce and it will show me the one website that's like here's the newest applesauce come get it I do I do miss the days where there was a man named Jeeves who would bring me one thing maybe it wasn't the one thing I wanted but I wasn't overwhelmed yeah now Travis has to go to Fiverr and try to find somebody named Jeeves to google shit for him <laughs> at AOL you could join a chat room for people that like sports <laughs> can you fucking imagine Football, basketball, whatever. Any sport. <laughs> he just joined and talk about sports. <laughs> Maybe that's really what she's there for. Maybe she just likes sports, but she doesn't want to get too specific about it. So yeah. she's got to be. It's entirely possible. I'm going to give chatters. the same answer to the bread monster. Uh, just, just let her chase her place. It sounds cool. She's happy yeah. with it. Seems, seems like she's having. Honestly, she's can good. I, can I ask everybody in the room who's been having a good chuckle? Uh, take a beep. Think about your experience with the internet and if you couldn't put that fucking genie back in the bottle would you not if you could un-internet yourself you probably would right now yeah let's let it let's let her live you know like charlie bucket have one more dream before we wake her <laughs> up until all the golden tickets are gone That's eh really yeah. um does that help yeah it helps a ton thank you so much thank you my pleasure uh let's get and hello hi hi who's you i am eric <laughs> hello eric Use Eric. Hello. So I was in a real big hurry right out of work, and I needed to get to the mechanic who had my car. And the city had you just... You getting some fucking NOS? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was an upgrade. Um, no, I, I needed to get there quick, and the city had just got these electric scooters that, you know... 
and I thought this would be a real cool way to finish or like to start my evening. Thought no one ever. This <laughs> <laughs> is something new. Um, well, uh, I I ate it. Like, yeah. You ate, you the, ate the whole scooter? <laughs> that's, you did it that's so bad. They tell you that right in the app to not eat it. <laughs> it says, I know it looks delicious, but please. It's please. called a lime. Yeah. <laughs> All right, listen. It's different things in different cities, but Travis is right. It's called a lime in some cities. There was a great joke that would have played in a city. In some that, cities, it's called a bird, which you could you'd stretch. Still, sorry, Stray okay. That. So you, uh, oh, you, oh, you crashed. Yeah, I, I crashed the scooter. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, I was had, the scooter okay? <laughs> the scooter was fine. Oh. I had gotten probably 11 feet. <laughs> Holy shit. Now, I'm not no, I need to, to hear a lot more second. Oh, I do want to say it's quite a relief that we're going to have one tonight where we're not just affirming your life choices. <laughs> I, want to, I want to hear more about the big spill. <laughs> yeah. I just slow mo. Like, take it into slow mo for us. How, is, how, how, how does it feel? This is well, radio AFV for me. I am loving it. Well, you're okay though, right? Yeah. I'm, okay, then I'm loving it. Yeah. <clears throat> there is no way that someone at my work did not see it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Was it a cool fall where you, yeah. like, fell and landed, Ooh. like... Mm. On your side on, like, a sexy pose? Uh, maybe that's what it <laughs> looked like. What, what did it, it feel it like? <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I was in a hurry, so I had gone as quickly as I could, as quickly as I could. And uh, so I... The scooter stopped, and I did not... Right. Sure. And I hit in like an attempted sexy slide uh-huh. uh, and kind of skid across the pavement and lost my pants. Fuck. And yes! <laughs> in my- a cool way? <laughs> Kind of a sexy. <laughs> There's still a benefit, a shadow of a chance. It was still a cool crash. <laughs> it took all my pants. Yeah. <laughs> Claims your pants. It took all my pants. Yeah. <laughs> the street just a mouth opened up. <laughs> Mine now. <laughs> your pants belong to the city. I okay. would sell one of my children into maritime service to watch this happen. <laughs> So, but it sounds like some of your coworkers did enjoy the show. I can't see a way that they, that someone didn't see it. So you're wondering if we have a job for you and then my brother, my brother, <laughs> me, corporate ladder or? <laughs> yeah, part of it. No. What um, are your qualifications? Because I know riding a scooter good is not <laughs> one of them. <laughs> you're, you are okay though, right? I'm, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Good. Um, how are your pants? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> What's your que- what is your question? Because I can't uncrash that scooter for you. How do I sort through my coworkers and find out okay. who saw? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would like to see if any of them have burst blood vessels from laughing. <laughs> there, there was Peepus. There, like. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. So when you say took all your pants. Yeah. Yeah, no, all of the pants that I had. Okay, hey, 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 hey. Do you remember when I said the thing about how there's still a shadow of a chance that it was a cool crash? Listen, I'm not, I'm not judging you. This question's been going for a while. You really made us wait for that big reveal. But you didn't make your coworkers wait, which is great. Well, huh. Maybe you need a sketch artist? Like, have you seen this Beavis? <laughs> that ain't going to do it. Hey, have you considered just trying to make eye contact with your, empl- uh, your coworkers one at a time? That seems foolproof. So where do you work now? <laughs> Is it How long were you on the ground before you got up? Different state or just a different city or what? 
Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, yeah. This is a cool story. You're gonna fucking know who saw. <laughs> In I your know. heart, you know already. <laughs> what you need is a way of making it just, like, foolproof, where if somebody can't meet your gaze, you just, like, nod at them in a way to say, like, you, you saw it, and then they'll nod back, and then you'll know. Maybe you need, like, them to sign a... This, is, this is above HR's head, is the problem. Um, you... You must quit this job. There's no jokes. Where jokes left. Jokes... Left well, the room. Because no, quit would imply that you went back to turn in some paperwork or you something. You can't go you back. Can't go oh, back shit. anymore. Can't go back. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. You're going to have to do this again inside the office. <laughs> no? Listen. This accomplishes two things. One, whoever... You, there's going to be two tiers of laughter at this point. People laughing very hard and then people laughing kind of hard. The people on that lower tier definitely saw it the first time. <laughs> The other benefit is now you will know that everyone has seen it and you don't have to sweat. That's how you start to rebuild. Does that help? Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Glad we can help. Uh, Last one. All right, yeah, Colin. Hello, Colin? Yes, Colin. Hi, Colin. Um, So what happened, we were today at the Denver Zoo. Hell yeah. Uh, which was great. How uh, is it? It was super awesome. Cool. Um, I'd never been. Anyway, um, lots of great animals. So, um, <laughs> it's the goal. Like, <laughs> that's what they go for there. <laughs> they got there. Um, so we were in the, the tropical exhibit with all the snakes. And when we came outside, there's all the strollers they have parked there because you can have the strollers inside. Um, of the it, snake exhibit. I like that policy the, yeah, a lot. Yeah. Well, no, the babies were inside. You just can't have the strollers. Oh, okay. Um, so there's empty strollers just lined up there. So we walk out, and the stroller nearest the door, I see that there is a squirrel tail protruding from the bag um, of this stroller. Uh-huh. And I see, oh, neat, a squirrel, whatever. Um, and then moments later, the squirrel leaps out and has in its mouth a Ziploc baggie with half what I think was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Nice. Um, and that's then, a dream if you're a squirrel. Sure, well, that's love the thing. That. The squirrel was having a great time. So, and then I was sort of watching the squirrel like, oh, is he going to get in? And my first instinct was, should I help the squirrel open the bag? That... <laughs> that didn't last very long, but that was sort of the first thought. Sure. Um, but then the second thought was, should, should we wait and tell the people that own this, the stroller? And I guess this is the question. Is there an etiquette to, if you see a squirrel in, like, somebody's baby bag, right. do, are you obligated to, like, yeah. leave a note or, like, tell them <laughs> yeah. there was a rodent in your baby bag? You yep. have to burn... What, what do you do? Yeah my, immediate, I, yeah, my immediate gut check is that you have to have that conversation and make sure you do it while I'm standing within earshot because, right. holy shit, I want to hear what that sounds right. like, bud. I, I will tell you right now, I have a two-year-old who I love very much, but if I walked out and found, a, I guess, a note on her stroller that said, I saw a squirrel in your bag, I wouldn't know what to do with that information. Yeah. I guess throw the bag away? Flip side, if I was going back to the car and my son was screaming for his peanut butter jelly sandwich, I reached down there and some fucking furry ripscallion has taken it away, I'm going to lose my fucking gourd. So yes, I would like a heads up. Well, and so what, what we ended up doing was sort of lurking in the area, and as people with babies would walk by, we'd sort of watch and see if they were going to walk towards the stroller. Oh, God. And that's a good look, bud. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was, so, to my credit, I was there with my girlfriend, so I at least sort of had that feminine sure, buffer. Sure, 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 sure. Um, but we did realize quickly... More of like a couple shopping <laughs> yeah, right. than like a kidnapper. Right. But we, we did realize pretty, well, not quickly enough, but eventually that we can't just be the people hanging out by the strollers. Right, right, yeah. right. So yeah. we did go and look yeah, at the lions. Colin. Uh, hey, Colin. Hey, Colin. Yeah. Tell, tell me true. When you went outside and you looked at the strollers and you saw a squirrel tail poking out of one of them, out of the bag, the storage bag in the back, did you have, even for a little bit, and don't be afraid if the answer is yes, did you have the thought of, somebody's trying to steal squirrels from the zoo? <laughs> At the time, I was very in tune with the animals, so it was like, I want this squirrel to succeed. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, shit. I mean, I'm glad that you didn't chase the squirrel away because, like, you can't go to a parent and say, hey, 
No big deal. A squirrel ate that a little bit, but it should be fine. I saved most of I it. I saved most of it. It should be fine to give it to your child. A squirrel only ate a little bit. Well, part of what I wanted to hang around for is to see if I, the squirrel would hang around so I could see if it would get into the bags. I don't yeah, know if the squirrel got the yeah. sandwich. Yeah, you get dinner Wait, in hold movie. on, Connor. Are you afraid it gave up? I don't know. I don't know how that's trepidatious a, like, that that's squirrel the, was. That's the closest that squirrel has ever been to pure happiness. <laughs> it's not going to quit. There's, I guarantee you. Let me give you at least that bit of solace. The squirrel got the sandwich. No question. <laughs> Even if it had to throw it out of a tree a bunch until the bag exploded, <laughs> it got it. It got the sandwich. And his squirrel friends are looking at him like, just fucking give it up, Derek. Damn. <laughs> um, hey, I just decided, do not approach these parents. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Colin. If I look for a sandwich and it's not there, I'll be like, ah, oh, what an inconvenience. If a stranger approaches me at the zoo while I'm with my kid and says, a squirrel got your bag, I'm going to run away quite fast and dream about it for the rest of my life. Yeah. It sounds like you're covering up for a much worse thing you yeah. did. Yes. Honestly, that's how it sounds. Does that help, Colin? That helps very much, this thank is, you. It comes a little late, I imagine this helped, but no, enjoy. Next time. Next, time. next time. Hey, no, I know I did the right thing. Good. Right. Thank you. All right, can we bring the house lights back down? We're going to yeah, drop those up. house lights out. Whoosh. Folks, Thank you so much for having us Holy here in this shit. beautiful city. You've been so amazing. I uh, wanted to mention it's that, uh, that giving time of year, and uh, we ask every year that uh, you are kind enough to support our hometown of Huntington, West Virginia, in helping to give the families there uh, a little bit nicer holiday season here in these uh, candle nights. It is more desirable than normal to give to charity. So we have asked that you go to mbmbamangels.com and uh, claim some of the items there, or you can just uh, kick in some money to help give some folks a nice holiday season. So Thank please you. do that. Thank you. If you would be so kind. Um, also, we hope that you've already grabbed them because uh, we don't know how many are left, but there are some really amazing posters. Yeah, on Anusha Sayed did those, and they are They're great. fucking so They're good. They're incredible. Uh, yeah. I also want to say um, we have a graphic novel series based on our podcast, The Adventure Zone. Thank you. You can go to theadventurezonecomic.com and pre-order book two or order book one if you haven't gotten it yet, theadventurezonecomic.com. Yes, uh, I want to thank the Well Theater. It's so it's so yeah. big, first of all, which is wild. We and have, nice. It's very, very nice, but we walked out here for sound check and my stomach raised up into my lungs out of fear, but you all have been great. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you to uh, our daddy for uh, coming with us on, on tour and introducing us. Thank you to uh, Paul for all the yeah, help. Uh, we could not do this without Paul. Thank you for, uh, to our families who came yes. with yeah. us. And they're incredibly supportive and wonderful. So, some um, of our incredible opening act. Yes, uh, thank you to Sawbones. They're going places. Don't forget to grab the Sawbones book. Griffin, I'm ready. Final Yahoo is sent in by Morgan Davey. Keep it wavy, Morgan Davey. It's by an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call Prebus. Okay. That's a weird name when you know what the question is. Thank you for your bravery, Prebus. Because Prebus asks, can I vape and still be a Republican? <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Welcome back to WKEP at night. Up next, looks like we've got a PSA from local forest ranger Duck Newton. Do I start now or? Yeah, I lean in, Duck. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay, I, I wanted to address the unfortunate situation that... Okay, listen. Two people, good people that I and a lot of y'all have known our whole lives are dead. 
torn to shreds by... A savage, uh, bloodthirsty beast that defies human comprehension. If you'd like to know more, stop by the Cryptonomica, Kepler's premier museum of the macabre, just off Highway 20. Come, come on. We just wanted to warn y'all, to, to beg you. If you see one of those things out in the forest, don't fight. Don't scream. Run. Run as far as you can. Doc, it's almost midnight. Listen, folks, if you see anything, please go to thelamplighter.org and let us know. And get behind a locked door tonight. Anything else we need to... Oh, they're leaving. Okay, well, that's thelamplighter.org, and stay safe out there, Kepler. <laughs>